friends, it's Amber with Mickey Travels. Today I have a video that is a mix of questions that I've received through my years of working as a travel agent and questions that I receive from my Facebook page, my YouTube page, uh, regarding Disney trips. So this is a frequently asked question video. I have two different categories I'm going to talk about. First one are questions related to working with a Disney agent and the second are questions related to any type of Disney trip. So let's get started. I have a list here. Let's first do the Disney agent questions. Uh, the one I get probably the most, how much does it cost to use your services? A Disney travel agent that is authorized by Disney, which Mickey Travels is, is zero dollars. It is free. And some people I will work with and then they're like, well, I don't really want a travel agent. I kind of want to plan it myself. Um, a travel planner and travel agent through Disney, like what I do, is a little different. We can do as much or as little as you would like on the trip. You can do all the planning and we're just there for any questions you have. Or we can do all the itinerary and dining reservations and everything. So it costs you nothing just to add someone's name to the reservation to help you. And that's why the services are free. Disney does pay us a commission. And so if you're interested, Mickey Travels has plenty of agents that can help you, and I am one of them. Question two, do you allow payments? Well, you're not paying me. Uh, you're actually paying Disney. And Disney, um, Walt Disney World Resort reservations, Disneyland reservations, only require $200 for their deposits. And after that initial payment, you can make as many payments or as little payments as you can 45 days before check-in, so if you want to make one lump sum payment or do a monthly thing, you can do that. And since all payments go through myself, you would just notify me when you were ready to make a payment. And I would apply that to your Disney trip. I handle all money's situations directly through Disney. So 45 days before check-in is when your full amount is due. So you can do payments as you would like. Okay, question three. I'm not near where you're located. Can I still use your services? Um, if you've watched some of my videos, you may have figured out where I am or if you've looked on my Facebook page. I live in Missouri and I work with clients all over the United States and now the world. I have some from New Zealand, United Kingdom, and some interest in some South American countries. And it does not matter where you are, I can work with you. Uh, the internet's a great thing. I have email contacts, I can talk to you over the phone, uh, Skype, we can do anything we need if whatever is easier for you to plan this trip. Now, through Mickey Travels, we do have many agents, so if you are needing to meet face-to-face -face with someone, you can look on our website, mickeytravels.com, and try to find one that's near you. But again, you don't have to be face-to-face -to, -face to plan a trip. There are all sorts of ways that we can connect and get your trip organized and perfect. Okay, the last one I have for travel agent questions, and I only have a little because I do have a travel agent video about what my services include. So if you were interested, you can watch that one. It's like my very first video I did. Okay, I already have a hotel. Can you still help me plan? This one gets a little touchy because I get people who have already either booked their entire trip or just have the hotel. And in that case, I want to help as many of you as possible. However, my amount of clients have skyrocketed within the past year, so I do take priority to ones who have booked their entire trips through me, but I will definitely help with questions if you are going to be doing off-property things. If you have the hotel but you still need tickets, I can book those for you. Uh, my costs are the same as Disney's, so I can get you the tickets and still plan for you, do your dining and whatnot. Um, if you already, again, have the trip booked, and it is through Disney, and you booked it by yourself through Disney, we can do a transfer as long as it was within 30 days and is not paid in full. And all that is is a form that I have, and you fill it out, and I fax it to Disney, and it just now notifies them that I'm your agent, and they will contact me, and I will contact you for any issues that may come about. And I can, you know, check constantly for pricing to make sure you're getting the best deal, because promotions come out and that's one thing people don't realize is that a travel agent can call in and update if something has gone down in price which we check all the time 
And yeah, so it's a win-win. You want to have someone there just in case, go ahead and have a travel planner. If you need someone to help you and hold your hand because you're stressed, get a travel planner. All my details and information are down below, my Facebook page, my email. Uh, contact me, any questions you have, and leave comments too. But I would love to help you guys. All right, so next I've got Disney trip questions. First one, when is the best time to visit Disney World, Disneyland, or take a Disney cruise? Well, that's tricky. Uh, there's lots of things to think about. Disney World and Disneyland are located in states that have beautiful weather. So Florida does have the humidity that's insane. But again, I live in Missouri, so we have humidity. But Florida humidity is a little stickier. And California is gorgeous year-round as well. So the cruise line. Uh, there are different months you should consider because of hurricane season. Um, but the, the plus side to that is those cruises will be cheaper. Uh, September, late August, and October tend to be hurricane season. So you, if you want to avoid that, any other time is great. If you can, for all three, avoid any type of holiday or if the kids are going to be out for school. Summer months are going to be crowded and holidays. So Christmas is probably the busiest time of year. The parks do shut down during the day and they can ask you that you cannot even come in because it is over capacity. And so there's those and then there's one more thing to think about. Disney's promotion history. And most of the time they do offer room discounts for Disneyland and Disney World. Cruise line promotions are rare, but there is one right now. If you book before the 15th of February, which is coming up, you only have to pay half your deposit at this time. So that's kind of cool because deposits are like 20% of the fare. But you need to think about what history has gone with promotions. And the one I get the most is free dining, and that's another question I have. So you need to maybe plan your trip around when promotions typically happen or just when kids are not going to be there because they're in school. So January, February, and March, avoid spring break. September, October, and November, and avoid the holidays. So those are the peak times that are not going to be super crowded. All right. What is the weather like in Florida for blank blank month? I get that more than probably anything else. And I've only visited Disney in the summertime. So I can only tell you when it's extremely hot and it's going to rain every day. But from what I've been doing research on, I can tell you that it's going to be shorts weather, probably May through September. And then in the evenings, be a little cooler. But I would just always check Weather Channel or whatever you, apps you use. And if you're going to not be in summer months, to always have the jeans, a sweater, and a jacket. Even in December, I don't think you'll be needing coats, but a jacket's going to be nice. So just that's just going to take some planning, but it's different all the time. And with this whole like El Nino and global warming stuff, it's hard to tell what the weather's going to be like. Because it, it snowed in Florida, I think, this past year. All right. When is free dining normally offered? Okay, again, something that we can't guarantee because we don't know when Disney's going to offer promotions. So we just like to look at what has happened in the past, and then we like cross our fingers and hope that you get the free dining. So anywhere between very end of August through November, I've seen it all the way up to Christmas before. So anything fall is probably, and hopingly, is that a word? Hope No. And hopefully <laughs> will fall in the free dining promotion for you. Um, we have seen these past couple years, they are random dates. Halloween's normally included, but again, we can't guarantee anything we don't know. Disney doesn't tell us much in advance, and when they do tell us, we only get a few days to prep and get ready for that for anyone that does it. So my tip for that, don't wait and book until you know there's going to be free dining. What we can do is we can discuss options and say this is what the quote or price would be before free dining was released. We can book it. And then if free dining comes out and it's not those dates or your resort's not available, I can make those changes. It won't cost you anything. And we can just figure out a way for you to save money and get the free dining. So fall is normally when free dining is offered. I think one time I did see it in the spring. It hasn't happened for a while, though. Okay, when and where do you find show times before you arrive at the park so you can plan your day? Good question. My Disney Experience, which is also an app on... Uh, phones, 
Android, maybe, I know it has it on iPhone, I have it on mine. You can go to My Disney Experience and under My Itinerary, you can look through every single show event that's going on for a particular day. It will give you all the times. You can actually click on it and add it to your itinerary so it will be on there so you'll know when to go. So if you don't have the app and you're not wanting to plan that much in advance and know, okay, we need to be at the flag retreat at this time and this parade starts at this time and you just want to go with the flow, you can find all that on the maps when you get there. They'll tell you when everything's happening and you just kind of look at that instead of looking on your app. So there are a few places you can look to find all that. All right. What's the best way to maximize your trip during a busy holiday season, especially when traveling with young children? I make the same remarks for whether it be a busy holiday season or a summer trip. The best way to maximize is realize, first off, you can't do everything in one trip. It's going to be impossible. So if you want to rush around and do as much with the young kids, it's going to be tough. You will need to plan nap times and pool time in the middle of the day. Afternoons in the summer and the holidays tend to be the most busiest. So if you are somewhere else besides in the parks when that's happening, it will save a lot of grumpiness. So what I suggest always is also to avoid, especially during the holidays, to avoid the parks that are going to have the extra magic hours that day. They will be the busiest and kind of avoid those. So the only one I always say you need to do anyway is Magic Kingdom evening extra magic hours, but if you have young children, you may not be staying up that late anyway. So I can help with the planning on that if you have a list of things you want to do or have no idea what you want to do, but you're going during the holidays, we can make an itinerary and kind of make suggestions. But again, the pool and nap time is essential when you have young children. All right, we're almost done here. Where can I find times before I head to Disney? Okay, I think I just answered that. Yeah. When buying everything all inclusive, should I brew what should I bring money for? Excellent. When you purchase an entire package, which would be your room accommodations at either a value moderate or deluxe resort through Disney, there are downtown Disney Good Neighbor Hotels we can also book. And then at Disneyland, there are three on-property resorts and then the Good Neighbors. So we can book any of those. At Disney World, you can add the dining plan and your park tickets. And at Disneyland, we can add just the park tickets. They no longer have a dining plan. They do have an option for a character meal, but it won't really save you any money. It's just like pre-purchasing it. So I don't really recommend the pre-purchase meal for that. Okay, so what do we got? We got room, dining, tickets. So what do you bring money for if you've paid for all three of those? Transportation is going to be free because you're going to be taking the buses or monorails, and I have a video on that too, and the Magical Express from the airport. So you don't necessarily need a car if you're flying directly into Orlando International. You do have to pay gratuity at all of your dining locations. It is not... A required amount unless you have a party of six or more and it will be 18% that is automatic if you have six or more in your party so tax taxes included with the dining plan so tip gratuity and then souvenirs you're gonna probably be purchasing a lot of those so you need spending money and an easy way to not to have to carry cash and to be sure you only have something you're gonna be using for the gratuity or the souvenirs put it all on Disney gift cards they will accept those and then I think the only other thing you need money for is if you needed some extra snacks or drinks. Now you do get some with the dining plans, so you never know though, you may need something additional. But if you strategize and we work on it, you can figure out that you don't have to do that if you wanted to buy. Like we went to Sci-Fi Dining and instead of a dessert, they gave us a bottle of water for our dessert credit for there because we were stuffed. So we didn't have to get any drinks because we got the water free with our snack credit. Lots of things can be considered a snack. Okay, I think that is the gist. I always have a ton of questions all the time. And again, I'm, I answer almost all of them when you guys ask on YouTube, I'm pretty quick about it. And then Facebook, I'm on all the time since a majority of my business goes through that. And then my email, amber at mickeytravels.com. Um, I do have another day job. I am a school teacher. 
So if you are trying to contact me during the day, I may be teaching, but I will get back to you. And I love what I do, so I want to make sure you have everything you need and that we help make this a perfect trip. All right, so that's it. Any other questions you want, leave them below, and I will help you out. Uh, you can contact me anytime. I would love to talk to you. Thanks so much for subscribing. Guys, I'm so excited for the amount of people that are just sending me messages saying they love the videos. I appreciate it, but I do need some more ideas. So if there's something you want to see, let me know. I will talk to you all soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.